all, my name is Krishnak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss how much maths do you need to know to become a data scientist. Now, why I am making this particular video? Because still many people are afraid after hearing data science thing. They'll just be thinking that they really need to be a PhD in maths. Okay. One of the questions recently, one of my subscribers asked Krish uh, in 10 plus 2, even though I was from the science background, I did not had a good hold of maths. In engineering, I did not had a good, ho good hold of maths, you know. So can I cope with this when I'm actually trying to become a data scientist? Let me tell you guys, when I was actually in my school days or college days, like, like 10 plus 2 or engineering days, I knew maths. I used to practice a lot, but I never understood the practical application of it. I never knew why differentiation was used. Probably I was not able to relate with a real world scenario. I was not able to relate with a practical implementation. That is the most common mistake that we usually do. And many people does, you know, when you are actually learning maths from your school days or college days, why you do not, why many people have that fear, you know, the reason is that they are not able to understand. They're not able to relate to it. And that is the reason why many people are afraid of maths. That's it, you know, but as soon as I learned data science, I, I was able to relate so many topics because I had something I was using that in a practical real world scenario stats you know i was able to apply the equation i was now able to understand why differential equations are used why integration is basically used for a specific purpose and that was all possible when i started learning data science because when i was learning a topic i was able to relate it to the real world application so in this particular video i'm going to cover how much match do you require or do you need to become a data scientist and remember guys, this question was asked by many, many people. What if I say, okay, the main thing in mass that you really need to know is basically these three things. One is, you know, and trust me, this is very, very much simple. One is linear algebra. One is calculus. One is statistics. These are the main three section with respect to the maths that you're going to learn as a data scientist. Yes, your school knowledge, your college knowledge will be definitely applicable. And there are many syllabus, many topics that probably is basically getting covered if you're learning with respect to data science. But the main three subsection is linear algebra, calculus and statistics. And always remember, guys, do not learn this subject separately. Always try to learn it by learning. Suppose I'll give you an example. OK, suppose I'm learning how does a neural network work? In neural network, if I want to understand how does gradient descent work, that part calculus will come. If I want to understand how the weights are getting updated, that part through back propagation calculus will come. If I want to see that how the inputs and the weights are getting multiplied, that part linear algebra may come. You know, suppose I'm solving a machine learning problem statement. I really need to visualize some kind of data. I want to analyze some kind of data. I want to do some kind of test like Z test, T test that time statistics will come. Okay. Always understand when you are trying to learn in this particular manner, you'll definitely be able to relate it because that time, suppose if I'm learning differential equations, when I'm learning how a back propagation will happen, that time I'll get a clear idea that how does it, how does partial differentiation actually work and how it is related to a real world scenario. So never learn it separately because these subjects are quite huge how it is getting applied, how it is getting used in data science. That is the main thing that you really need to understand. Otherwise, if you do PhD also, that will not be sufficient because maths is quite huge and it is quite interesting. Also, if you are able to relate it with a real world scenario, my suggestion will be that do not get afraid. Instead, learn it, learn as you're learning things, try to combine all these things that is linear algebra, calculus and statistics, wherever it is required. Most of the time when you're learning machine learning, like if I take you an example of uh, there is an amazing algorithm in machine learning, which is called as principal component analysis. And in principal component analysis, you really need to understand about vectors. Okay. At that time, I'll definitely try to use linear algebra. You know, at that time only I'll try to understand it. And when I'm trying to learn linear algebra at that point of time, definitely will be very, very helpful for us. And we will be able to relate it. This is how I have actually learned. You know, I'll tell you how you should basically go ahead with what all resources you should basically refer. But let me give you one very good example. Okay. If you remember guys, uh, there is an algorithm which is called as linear regression, which is the most basic first algorithm. 
in linear regression you will be having calculus you will be having linear algebra topics you will be also be having statistics topic now how did i learn linear algebra uh, sorry linear regression just understand in linear regression you have something called as cost function there the weight updation is basically happening by using this partial derivative which is involved in calculus now i understood that particular topic when i was learning that particular algorithm linear algebra also i'll be able to understand because there we'll do lot of different different kind of uh, weights multiplication or coefficient multiplication y is equal to mx plus c stats how does the uh, statistics different different concept do we require scaling in linear algebra so that part some of the statistics formulas will act definitely come because we are dealing with data right so this is how whenever i was learning one algorithm i did not learn separately what is linear algebra separately in linear algebra also you have something called as vectors okay yes i have learned vectors in my school days but i was not ever able to relate it so that is the reason why i am saying you that never learn separately instead learn it while you are learning something like a machine learning algorithm i say that as reverse engineering i pick up the main topic and then try to divide that into multiple pieces and try and try to learn each and everything right now let's go to the next thing in linear algebra what all things you really need to be good at one is vectors matrices transpose of a matrix inverse of a matrix determinant of a matrix trace of a matrix dot product eigen values eigen vectors pca if you remember principal component analysis which is a very amazing dimension tree reduction algorithm uh, in machine learning their eigen values and eigen vectors will definitely be used single value decomposition this is a pretty much important right if you really want to do the dimension tree reduction and I, i'm not saying that this is only the thing but these are the main things that you will be using for most of the time right and most of the interview questions will be related to something like this they'll try to understand what is vectors what is scalar how does eigen value eigen vectors actually work everything they'll try to ask with respect to that this is the basic thing and when you are learning deep learning probably you are learning some of the machine learning algorithms this topic may come and you can learn this particular topic separately how i'll tell you where or you can actually refer everything i'll try to tell you but understand this is the smartest way to learn quickly anything okay so first is linear algebra definitely these are some of the topics that i have written and remember i'll also try to convert this um ppt into pdf so that i'll give you this link you can actually see to it okay now coming to the next one differential calculus now in differential calculus i'll tell you some of the topics like chain rule of differentiation partial derivatives integration right beta and gamma function functions of multiple variable limit continuity partial derivatives variance of optimizers there are so many optimizers that are used in and these are some of the application when i say variance of optimizers loss function back propagation maxima and minima these are some of the applications for this particular calculus that we basically use in deep learning if you go and check out my complete deep learning playlist in my youtube channel guys what i have done is that i have combined everything suppose if i am teaching you that how to how does a neural network work i have actually combined all the calculus part inside this like in, there is a concept which is called as weight updation formula and i have actually shown that how the partial derivative or chain rule of differentiation actually happen over there while they are actually calculating the slope so i have definitely made this as a story and that is the way that i have actually taught so people should also think that learning should happen in that particular manner otherwise it will definitely take one year if you are trying to learn all these things separately and then seeing that how it is basically applied in data science right so you just go and watch my deep learning playlist guys if you, if the first topic in deep learning playlist probably is that how does a neural network work so there i have included some of the maths then how does back propagation actually happen i have included some of the maths over there okay calculus definitely right and then uh, if you go to the next topic uh, i should have had written over here differential calculus but instead i should have had written calculus so i'll just make this changes like when i started teaching you different types of optimizers there are different different types of optimizers gradient descent ada grad ada different different optimizers are there and there you will be able to understand how calculus is amazingly used there is an application which is called as minima and maxima which is final goal of training the deep learning models so what i have done i am not teaching you separately how does this happen instead i am teaching you along with the subject so you should definitely have a look on to that and that is how the learning will quickly happen right now let's go to the third part i think most of the important things i have actually covered over here which is very much applicable to data science now if i go to the next step stats and statistics i'd like to divide this into two parts one is basic stats and one is the advanced stat in basic stats there are terms like probability introduction to basic term variable random variables what is population sample population mean 
population distribution, sample distribution, mean, median, mode, measure of dispersion, variance, standard deviation, Gaussian normal distribution. All these things you'll be able to find out in this two playlists that is statistics in machine learning, feature engineering. Now in statistics in machine learning, what we have actually done is that I have explained you the theoretical part. And in feature engineering, you'll be able to see that how we are able to apply this in practical purpose. Even there is a playlist on EDA, exploratory data analysis. So this is specifically used, most extensively used to do the EDA part, to do some of the feature engineering part. So definitely, this is the basic stats that is basically required for you all to know. You know, again, if you are going to prepare for data science, guys, one suggestion that I really want to give you guys, don't make it as an extended way. Try to be smart, try to complete the portion, try to do that much so that you'll be at least able to get the job and you'll be able to work quickly, right? I know end-to-end -end projects is actually required, but before that you really need to complete all these machine learning projects and all, sorry, machine learning algorithms, stats, you know, you need to complete how you are going to apply linear algebra and all. And if you are able to learn in that specific manner, it is very, very good, right? Now coming to the advanced stats, so here you have QQ plot, Chevin Epson inequality, discrete and continuous distribution, Bernoulli and binomial distribution, log normal, power log, Cox, box Cox, Poison distribution, application non-Gaussian distribution, Z test, T test, chi-square test, ANOVA test. This Z test, T test, chi-square, ANOVA test is a part of inferential statistics, where you take a population, you take a sample, and you make some conclusion for that particular sample by performing some experiments like this kind of Z test, T test, chi-square test, and all, right? And this is also definitely being useful in EDA part. When I say about QQ plot, Chevinem's inequality, log normal distribution, your data is having different different distributions and all. And again, all these things is covered in my statistics in machine learning and EDA playlist. Okay, so the reason why I'm making this entire video is that guys to make sure that your learning should be pretty much efficient. Now let me talk about the sources. I've already told about my playlist, but these two sources that is three blue, three blue, one brown, and Khan Academy will definitely help you to understand all these things that is linear algebra, calculus, even stats. Okay. Now, when to refer, how to refer, I'll tell you. Suppose, just imagine that you're seeing my linear regression. Uh, suppose you are seeing my one of my video in PCM, okay, principal component analysis. So in principal component analysis, suppose I have discussed about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. There I'll not say you what exactly is eigenvectors and eigenvalues, right? I'll not be able to tell you. Or how, if I'm actually explaining you something, I'll tell you that here we use some kind of vectors, here we use some kind of scalar, and this is what the formula is. I'll definitely not be able to derive the formula over there. So what you need to do is that, okay, you have not understand that how does that eigenvectors comes or how does, how does vectors behaves? How is this formula derived? You can definitely watch the Khan Academy or three blue brown, one brown series because they have explained in an amazing manner till the crux. Okay. I'm not telling you to just go see in Khan Academy. Everything is there with respect to linear algebra, statistics, everything is there, but you need to spend time to learn all these things. But instead, I'm telling you to go and learn in that way that suppose if you are learning a topic, suppose I'm learning a topic with respect to PCM, okay? And if there is something like eigenvalues and eigenvectors, I'll go into the Khan Academy and there is a topic on that also in their YouTube channel. I'll go and read it. I'll try, try to understand more in depth. And then I'm pretty much sufficient because I will be able to understand that particular algorithm in an amazing way, right? Suppose I want to understand partial derivative. Suppose in back propagation, we do partial derivative. In partial derivative, we calculate the slope and then we try to reduce the weights. Okay, this is what happens in deep learning. Now, how does this partial derivative happen from scratch? If you want to go and check it out, check three blue one brown series or Khan Academy. There definitely one topic will be there with respect to that also. In stats also, suppose you want to understand one topic in completely in depth and probably you're following my playlist, you're learning over there. And suppose if you have facing some problems, go over there and try to learn it from there. Only to make your base stronger where you are actually confused, you have to definitely follow this particular pattern, right? This two YouTube channels is pretty much amazing. One is Khan Academy and one is three blue, one brown. With respect to any kind of maths, more depth, you really need to see some visualization diagrams and all. Definitely, right? And I'd also like to refer StatsQuest. You know, StatsQuest is also an amazing YouTube channel where uh, a uh, lot of maths, a lot of easy maths will be actually displayed with respect to statistics, right? So this is what I would suggest you all to follow. This will definitely be helpful. And this is how you can definitely make sure that this is what the maths is basically required. Again, guys, maths is quite huge. But again, my main aim of this particular video is that try to learn 
data science in a quicker and a smarter way so that you don't have suppose just imagine you don't have much time so you have to be very much smart while you're learning things and you really need to complete it quickly right and that is the reason your school maths will also be coming up you really need to have that particular knowledge also but if you try to follow this particular pattern it will be pretty much amazing i'll see you all in the next video this was it from my side i hope you like this particular video share with all your friends please make sure that you subscribe the channel and have a great day ahead thank you one doll bye bye